So both trailers open with a similar sequence that involves Sora launching onto a yellow glowing grind rail. If you look closely, it blends in, but on the left you can see another rail. I didn't see this mentioned in anyone's analysis, but we've seen these rails before in the orchestra trailer, looking like it led to the highest point in Olympus. So I'm guessing this is the world gimmick mentioned by Nomura that every world will have a gimmick of sorts. As Sora progresses along the rail, however, we see yellow opera all spawning in their attack modes or in their limit breaks. I'm gonna I'm gonna keep on calling them limit breaks because I feel like they will have it since uh, nobody's have limit breaks. I feel like Heartless will also have them as well. We see Sora with a reticle locking on to the opera so let's quickly pan down to the menu to see what options we have there's three listed in the order of blaster super slide and jump but these options do not feature their inputs but going off of kh2's command menu i'm certain it's going to go triangle for blaster square for super glide and x to jump for obvious reasons we see blaster in the trailer but i think we have a clue as to what super slide also may be back in dream drop distance when you were grinding you could press square or x on the 3ds to burst off into um regular flight we know from namura that flow motion in kingdom hearts 3 will be a more controlled version so super slide must be the new version of that because we see sora in um in his blue aura also in the toy story trailer and we see him use the ground pound there and it looks different compared to what it was before before it seemed like a huge area it had like a huge radius like attack and stuff and he actually pounded into the ground and i'm pretty sure he can do that in kingdom hearts 3 as well but the one we saw was more so based on him actually hitting an enemy and it caused him like this huge wave and not a huge wave but like this little wave in a small little compact area that kind of puts the rest of the enemy pushes them back rather than kills them off it more so pushes them back um we didn't even see it even do a lot of damage to the heartless that it actually hit as well so i'm guessing that this is going to be a new um changed up version from that or evolved version of that next in the trailer we see a new example of flow chain with the first being back in 2015 but now we've learned something new back in 2015 there was a prompt that looked like flow chain would have utilized an interactive quick time sequence but that isn't the case and namura explained that there will be certain areas we'll be able to reach with flow chain and without it we will not be able to get there so either they did away with the concept as to not disrupt the flow of gameplay or that option wasn't a quick time sequence or any type of intuitive sequence that we'll be using all the time but rather a prompt to finish the sequence much like we saw at the end of the flow chain back in 2015 or in other words that prompt will only appear with enemies and flow chain will not be as intuitive as we initially thought the last thing i wanted to point out about this portion of the trailer that i'm sure most keen eyes caught um at the sight of it we get to see a couple of check rims in this trailer does this mean that something involving lee will go down by the this point in the story or at some point in olympus we see Esau in his new clothes so this has to be his second visit to olympus meaning lee's training could be over and he's now out and about doing his usual recon for the guardians you know he's always been a recon like character for the organization 13 and it would definitely be cool to see him do his work in of course kingdom hearts 3 he also could be that third playable character that tetsuya nomura mentioned because i feel like it would be kind of cool to have a new kind of like type of mission that isn't necessarily remember in dream um 358 days over two when we had to sneak around and follow certain characters i wouldn't necessarily say i want that back but definitely i could see that being the case i could see it being an episode that they add into the game later as a dlc or even something that's in the game already that they're already planning and i definitely feel like these check rams do have some Something to do with Lee. We also see glimmering purple flames that may have something to do with Hades' invasion on Olympus from the films, but we aren't sure of that because the rest of the world doesn't really seem like it's at that stage yet. And there's also a kind of like thing that's going on with me, and I'm kind of having like this cognitive dissonance with the way how, of course, Sora is fighting a rock titan in his KH2 outfit, and then he's now traversing Olympus in his KH3 outfit. So we're just gonna have to wait and see what we learn from the actual game itself when it releases next year. 
So Sora's default combo has been updated for this trailer with a new finisher that involves Sora using an area of effect attack. The Japanese short also showcases this combo a bit more and some of the fan base are worried we've seen the same combo too much and that Sora may have been changed to the BBS and 0.2 gameplay style in which Sora will be stuck with one combo throughout the whole game that you can only change bits and pieces to and that'll be the connection to the kind of Kingdom Hearts 2 gameplay style. Kind of similar to how 305A Day over to had the little combo modifier to where after a certain point in the combo you can press an extra button that will start up a different kind of combo string I remember one of them was Ariel and I remember one of them just like ended the combo right there but it was a pretty strong striking move but I have no doubts in my mind that this combo is either being overused due to the promotional material always being pre-recorded which was mentioned by Tessina Moore before or that the person who does these um, actually like just loves this combo and maybe this is the combo that they choose to go with when they record this um, footage for us. My reasoning for this is because Nomura has already openly expressed that Kingdom Hearts 3 will be close to Kingdom Hearts 2 gameplay wise and even flat out said 0.2 which was stripped from Kingdom Hearts 3 does not play like Kingdom Hearts 3 it just shares some of the same elements with it. Elements such as situation commands, the scale of the game, heartless and the movement. Of course I mean the magic that you can do while you're still moving around and stuff like that. We've also seen other combos that appear to be closer to Kingdom Hearts 2 back in earlier trailers and we even get to see one even going as far back as this trailer itself if I'm not mistaken when we see Sora in his um in his first form or the new form that he has with the kingdom key we get to see him do some then so I don't see them uprooting that much development especially when Amura confirmed years ago that he wants KH3 to play like Kingdom Hearts too. But the combo in this trailer sees Sora use a knockback starter with an almost 360 range. After that, um, there's two lunge slices with a nice glowy finish um, for the finishers, I believe. And then afterwards, Sora does a 360 spin that has a low and mid variation. Then he does a lunge into the center of the enemies and uses the new finisher that I mentioned before. During this use, though, we also get to see, of course, in the sub trailer, Goofy lift off the ground and kind of bounce back as well. I don't know if that's an error or if that's something that's going to be changed later, but maybe this has something to do with the same thing that we saw back in 2015 when Sora kind of wiggled around Goofy as to respect his space back then. Specific to the Japanese version, we can see Sora actually break this combo with dodge rolls. So this definitely confirms that this is inputs because at a specific moment when we see Sora cancel out an input to do a dodge roll, obviously we are seeing them actually showcase to us that we won't be getting stuck into the combos kind of like how you could in Birth by Sleep. If you remember after a certain point in Birth by Sleep or after a certain point in even Dream Drop Distance, after you've done some some um, extension of the combos that the characters had you would kind of get stuck into those combos so it, it's showing right here that we won't get stuck into him because it's showing him at different points in the combo and I think after the dodge roll as well he starts up at the same point as he left off before so this is definitely inputs and this is also meant to showcase to us that hey you will be able to break away from your combos and you don't have to commit to all of these options i mean you don't have to commit to the inputs that you put in however i think that it would be cool if they made it to where you have to master this and it isn't something that's kind of free what I mean by that is that if you do too many inputs or if you press X too many times, then the game will register it as the combo being done. And even if you press dodge, you can't dodge. This is going to lead to some very interesting bosses later, especially with characters like the Data Organization 13. Remember, um, well not remember, but just think about like the Data, the Data Seekers of Darkness, 13 Seekers of Darkness, and we get to play against Xehanort and stuff like that. And we saw a bit of how Xehanort plays in Birth by Sleep, although I'm pretty sure his gameplay style is going to be overhauled the same way as Aqua's was. And just imagine, of course, being able to attack him. And if you press in, put in too many inputs, of course, we know he teleports. So if he teleports and then he hits you with some like ice move and then you get frozen, let's say he can freeze you this time around because they have the power in the PlayStation 4 to do stuff like that. 
like that and the game won't crash and he freezes you this time around then of course obviously then you will just get frozen but if you know how to play if you understand how he works then you can put in x amount of inputs dodge roll to evade the teleport and then of course you can go back into that same combo which we get to see Sora do here when he picks up at the same point that he left off and I feel like that would be very very interesting because it'll lead to us not having to start all the way over again to get those more powerful um hits on him with the finishers so definitely I feel like that's going to lead to some very interesting boss battles so definitely one of the most hype inducing moments of the trailer was these arrow guns which got a name change from the last time we saw them. Previously named two shoot blasters, let's talk about the changes more in depth. So back in 2013 we got a showcase of the twin shoot blasters and back then it looked like they were connected to the magic sword I had at his disposal at the time. Seeing as the projectiles was very close to tier 1 fire, we even literally see him shoot in the trailer. Then 2015 came along and the blasters went nameless and they now shot arrows of light. But the change here was that the transformation had two forms, a stationary one and one we saw later in the year that had Sora from a wide ass angle assaulting the Rock Titan. Jump ahead to 2017 and now we see an even more versatile form of this transformation, one that sees Sora moving about just like his wisdom form. So what is up with these significant changes we've seen the past five years? Well, Here's my stab at what we're actually seeing. Each individual Keyblade, as we know, will start with these transformations. What we see in the E3 2015 trailer was a shot lock, just like the one we saw in the orchestra trailer for, of course, um, I forgot the damn Keyblade's transformation's name, but obviously the one that makes Sora take, take on the yellow clothes, that one, of course, that thing that we saw that he did with the shot locks that's his shot lock in that form and this is the shot lock in this form then later in 2015 we probably saw Sora get so high up from using flow motion or an interactive flow ride big magic mountain and obviously we probably came down with the finisher and this is how we saw that happen but what we finally got to see in the Hercules excerpt is the complete showcase of simply how to shoot blaster will work freely in battle. And in the Japanese trailer, the level of detail displayed put a smile on my face with Sora actually shooting behind him to catch any lingering enemies. But the camera angles need to be need a bit of work, maybe pulling back a bit more and not actually focusing on Sora so much, seeing as he's gonna be moving around the screen very quickly. I mean who knows maybe they've already felt this stuff out and they have changed it but this is just a promotional material that they gave us um but i feel like pulling back completely and giving us a more wider angle would be the best thing to do it doesn't seem like there's going to be any real way to lock on to these enemies unless it we when we find out after we play it or if there's a demo some at some point if we find out after we play it and you actually lock on to the enemies that's closest then yeah i could see that being the case definitely but maybe just pulling back is the best option and probably what's best to do because then we'll be able to take in the whole like you know situation and digest it all rather than trying to work out oh did I kill that enemy that wound up going off screen when Sora moved in this direction or in that direction you see what I'm saying also the finisher needs some work too because in both of the trailers the explosion happens in random spots rather than where the projectile flew to so I'm guessing that of course we will see some changes to this at some point. Maybe this is early footage of it. Maybe this is footage of it that's right now, you know, maybe there's some things they didn't work on. Tessie Nomura did say back um, in 2015 that there's a lot of things that they do still need to work on. There's a lot of things that do still need polishing. And then there were a lot of things back then, of course, that was almost yeah that's two years ago but back then that still needed to be done completely however maybe at this point they're just more so at the stages to where they have everything in the game but everything hasn't really been balanced yet and maybe that's what's going to happen here maybe they're going to get down to balancing probably in these last few months before the game releases we know it's going to come out next year so of course i told you guys in a video before that i feel like it's going to be releasing sometime in march and if we're talking about that time span and maybe the time that they're using right now is probably balancing and polishing up the game but of course obviously talking about some other things that goes on in this whole little segment i definitely love the 
amount of detail that went into the costume for this form and it seems like they're putting in a lot more detail for this form compared to other forms with Sora's clothes not only changing his battle style not only changing I mean yeah we saw that it changed too in the orchestra trailer for the Keyblade um, for Olympus but we see his fighting style completely change for this Keyblade transformation and this Keyblade has been in the f forefront for the longest like for the very very longest and it's been promote it so damn much that I just feel like maybe the whole idea back in 2015 of this being his new dominant keyblade or his new um keyblade maybe that isn't that far of a reach maybe this has something to do with Yen Sid and maybe Riku getting the power of the kingdom key back at some point in the story but who knows man but this keyblade has a lot more going for it than the rest of the keyblades it just has so much going for it and I just can't wait to see exactly what's going to happen with this keyblade and of course the kingdom key as well because this keyblade is getting a lot of promotion a lot of promotion and I'm definitely wondering if this Keyblade is going to be taking the place of Kingdom Key. At the beginning of both Dead Bad sequences, we see Sora perform a new counter that slices directly up into the air and causes crazy knockback on this mini boss. The sequence then cuts to the boss regaining his footing in both trailers. So after the cut, we see Sora leap into the air and crack his Keyblade across the boss's face. If you pay attention to the boss, however, there's a ton of stun and knockback. And I know this is a mini boss, but Jesus, that's a bit excessive. Like, how much we see this shit happen seems excessive. It feels like, of course, they got a lot of feedback from how bosses worked in Birth by Sleep. And even in 0 0.2, and they were just like, okay, these bosses need to have stun and stagger. And they just went fucking completely crazy with it. Unless this sword is fucking strong as hell compared to this boss. And we don't know yet if it's going to have more RPG-like elements to where the level is going to matter. Kind of like how it mattered in uh, Final Fantasy XV. I know a lot of elements from Final Fantasy 7 Remake and Final Fantasy 7 15 and Kingdom Hearts 3 are going to be associated with each other, so definitely we could see some shit like that go down. In the next cut, we see Sora pull off a chain of magic. This looks different in the two trailers, and here's why. In the sub version of the trailer, Sora is showcasing that the KH2 magic finish will be making a return. This is performed when Sora does a rapid chain of magic while standing still or when Sora does um, magic in the place of the original combo's finisher. In the dub version, Sora does something that may seem like deja vu. He uses the on-the-fly magic chain Aqua can use in 0.2 and Sora used back in 2015. This is showing us that we have a lot more options and versatility to how we want to use magic and that it will be dependent on our approach as the players and I feel that's a promising sign for other elements as well. Moving along, remember what I said about how much this boss is staggering around the ending of the trailer or around the ending of both of these two trailers it's confirmed that it does have a counter as Sora goes for another hit see him lunge we see him lunge back kind of like you know he kind of just bounces back and Sora gets countered by this whole strike that he's finna do but then this leaves the question will this mini boss be stuck with this one attack or will we see an enraged form like the devil swarm that will allow it to use more attacks or increase its attack speed and damage the health bar for this boss isn't that big so there at least has to be another stage to him there has to be another stage to him either that or maybe he'll retreat and then he'll return later like we saw with the devil swarm something similar to that i would love to see bosses that carry out throughout in different stages through um the levels in kingdom hearts I would love to see that I wouldn't want to see like things go back to how they were to where like you have this mini boss at the end and then you just beat them and then you have to leave and then you come back and fight the true boss I would love to see a mini boss that follows us throughout different sections so kind of like on some nemesis and resident evil 3 type shit and then of course we fight the real boss by the end of that level so that that way we can just move on Tessie Nomura has already said himself as well that he doesn't want us going back like we did in Kingdom Hearts 2 to where you almost had to revisit virtually every world this is especially true for Kingdom Hearts 1 because you definitely had to revisit every, well, you had to revisit a few worlds. I don't remember it being every world, but it definitely was a few worlds to defeat um, those final bosses right before you got to the end of the game. 
or or he'll be a breeze when you take into account that Sora's MP bar is fucking massive. Every example of him using magic only depletes like 5 to 10% of this damn MP bar. And we know from the promotional material 0.2 that it didn't wind up working that way in 0.2, especially around the beginning of the game. Later on, you kind of get to use more magic, obviously, due to level, because um the way the game is designed is to make sure that your MP and health goes up by the time you reach the end of the game for the final stage of the Devil Swarm but the way magic worked in 0.2 was nothing like the promotional material like if you look at the demo gameplay and look at how much magic the mp depletes when she uses magic versus how much magic depletes when you actually play the game you're gonna be like oh, yo this is not the same because even at the in the beginning which is what the demo was based on the demo isn't put like in a random part of the damn game it's based on the beginning of the game and we still see aqua being able to use crazy amounts of magic like uh kuriga used half of the bar in the uh promotional material meaning the demo material and in the full game it still takes the whole damn bar so maybe that was something that was used probably just to make sure people could finish their playthroughs at demo at events so that that way they probably didn't have to stop maybe i'm guessing that's what went down there and it's definitely seemed like that's what's likely and maybe what's going on here is that once again this is promotional material and they probably put sora into god form or god mode which is kind of like a form that you like developers kind of put um, the characters or games into for them to be able to like test stuff for bugs and things like that you know see if the game will crash at the xxx amount of inputs or this many things can it handle this many things going on at one time and stuff like that and maybe that's what's going on here maybe the reason why it's depleting so slowly is because this could be the god form of Sora's I mean blah, 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 a playthrough in god mode so maybe that's what it is as well but Obviously, man, Nomura has confirmed that there will be another boss. Obviously, it's going to be the Rock Titan for this stage. And it's just it's just looking so good, man. Kingdom Hearts 3 is looking so damn good. I mean, there's some complaints here and there from people who have a lot more experience with the gameplay system of Kingdom Hearts 1 and 2. Um, I don't really have that much experience. I think I've already revealed to you guys that last year was literally my first time being able to really play through even Kingdom Hearts 2. And it's kind of crazy, man. But, of course, obviously, from my perspective, the game is looking good. It isn't looking like Dream Drop Distance. It isn't looking like 305 AD days over two it isn't looking like birth by sleep and the reason why i brought up 305 8 days over two is because i feel like besides recoded um rpg like elements and of course obviously recoded like the amount of shit that you could do in there like the amount of things that they took in that game and like the magic building system i think it was or the finisher building system i think it was it was one of those two i know it had some type of intuitive build up system to datasaur and you know other things as well in that game the mini games and stuff like that different elements here and there that changed up the gameplay style in general besides those things i feel like 305 8 days over 2 was probably the pinnacle of the gameplay aspects when it came to like you know portable kingdom hearts games or spin-off games and i'm not trying to say that obviously it's a better game than birth by sleep or it's a better game in a sense of gameplay wise than recoded or anything but what i'm saying is it actually featured a system that was kind of closer to Kingdom Hearts 2's. When you use magic, enemies actually got frozen. Enemies actually got stunned by um, thunder. And, you know, just those kind of things. They got burned by fire. They weren't just like... They didn't just like disappear. You didn't have to use something else to actually get those effects. They actually, it actually wound up happening. So, you know, in my opinion, I feel like all of the spinoffs should have took from that. Even though that was Dimps, I think, that made that. All of the spinoffs should have took from that and built on that. And by the time we got to Birth by Sleep, well, Birth by Sleep was the second one. But by the time we got to games, well, Recoded also had this as well with the like burn and freeze and stuff, if I'm not mistaken. But, you know, all of the spinoff games should have been like that. After Recoded, there was Dream Drop Distance. None of that stuff carried over into Dream Drop Distance. Uh, Birth by Sleep, of course. Obviously, that game was well-received. The gameplay was well-received. But that's because it was like you had a Kingdom Hearts 2-looking game 
in in the palm of your fucking hands. That's why people really felt like it was so damn good at the time. Because even though later on, you know, as we really compared it to Kingdom Hearts 2, we got to realize all the problems, it was still a very fun game. It's still very, very fun. And if they ever decided to go back and make something for the PlayStation 4 or PlayStation 5, since we know that that's going to exist, such as like a remake that actually puts all the Kingdom Hearts games on one disc that play just like of course the originals kingdom hearts one and two then definitely i feel like that would bird by sleep could probably be the best game if they just did something like that but right now it just has a gameplay system that's kind of wonky you know going back to that after playing kingdom hearts 2 and especially going back to dream Jar distance as it came out um earlier this year after playing kingdom hearts 2 i was definitely able to realize the same problems other people had so Definitely, that's going to be the end of the analysis with a few more miscellaneous things. In the dub, the best fight, at the, about the 48 second mark, there's a chest hiding in the back. Of course, the mini boss has a ridiculous hitbox um, that you can see if you pay close attention or if you do a freeze frame, you can see Windsor actually gets hit by the little move that he does. And the requirement bar for the situation commands feels fast as fucking kingdom hearts 3 but that's going to be it you guys this has been your boy Mazi. don't forget to do a little a class gaming and everything you do don't forget to keep it a class i hope you guys enjoyed this late as fuck analysis i'm sorry it took so long i'm so damn sorry and i'll catch you guys in the next one peace the heck out